good afternoon uh, so today we are back again uh, um, discuss some problems on frames um, by a method called the method of members so when i say method of members you would also recollect two methods method of joints and method of section that we have uh, applied uh, successfully to solve uh, problems of uh, special structures called uh, trusses so you are very well able to differentiate uh, truss and a frame a truss is made of slender members uh, in a particular uh, uh, fashion of arrangement forming the triangular uh, uh, pattern so that uh, uh, all the members are axial force members the loads at the joints in a truss can be transferred to the supports through an axial uh, uh, direction of individual members so during that time the members forming the truss either will experience tension or compression or some members may not experience neither compression nor tension and such members are called zero force member they are essentially should be part of the truss in order to maintain the stability of the stress as a structure also to have a provision of uh, uh, incorporating uh, uh, additional loads uh, sometimes those zero force members can become an active member in transferring the load so this is what uh, in the truss case that you have very well understood and on the other hand on the frames uh, in the last class uh, we have classified the frames uh, into two uh, into four classes the based on the rigidity of the structure and uh, based on the determination uh, deterministic approach whether it's deterministic frame or uh, indeterministic frame we were able to classify so indeterministic means it is when i draw an entire frame free body diagram i am unable to find out the support reactions based on the available condition of equilibrium then that frame is called a statically indeterminate in such cases they are become determinate when i dismember and draw an individual member free body diagram so that i would be able to get all necessary equation along with the sufficient number of equation to solve for unknowns <coughs> Uh, that is how we were able to classify the frames a rigid or non rigid frame how do you classify the moment the supports of the frame are removed are removed you would have the orientation of an individual member forming the frame does not change that means the integrity of the shape of the frame is maintained on the other hand if you remove the supports if the integrity of the shape of the <coughs> member is not been retained that collapses without support then that is called non rigid frame but non rigid frame is appropriately supported can also serve as a frame that's what we have seen so we had four classes of four classification of frames rigid statically determinate st rigid statically indeterminate frames non rigid statically determinate frame and non rigid statically indeterminate frame that's essentially what we have done in the last class we understood how do we handle such kind of analysis by method of members is what we were essentially learned and today's class i'm going to solve some problems in order to confirm your understanding of method of members of solving the frames problem definitely trusses and frames you would have questions in your examinations right so let me just share now uh, my uh, act inspire board i hope you are able to see this <coughs> board which we have seen in the last class uh, the classification of frames which we have essentially uh, started telling you at the beginning of this lecture and we had these uh, um, four classes rigid statically determinate rigid statically indeterminate non rigid statically determinate non rigid statically indeterminate frame and we have also looked at an individual cases through these slides uh, and that is evident for you now right so <clears throat> today i'm going to solve some problems in order to confirm the same uh, uh, approach of solving frames problem by method called the method of members so today's lecture number today we'll have two periods so i'll break in between and then again continue the lecture so this is lecture number
18 and today's date is 22-3-2021. Problems on frames. And we are going to solve that by a method called method of numbers, right? <clears throat> so let me just draw a frame and uh, develop gradually the configuration of the frame and hence we will be able to pose the problem and solve, right? So that is this. So I have three rigid links, but they are not uh, uh, essentially straight. So I have, I just developed the frame now. I have a frame with the rigid link ACE. So ACE goes like this. So that is a rigid link with the L shape. So this is a link. And this link is a state member. This link is a state member. Pardon that I am not. I have not drawn a straight line here, but this is straight member. This is straight. It's straight member. This is straight member, and this member is connected with an another member which is BCD that goes like this. So this is A, C, let me just have this figure, yeah, A, C, E. And this is B, C, D, B, C, D. <clears throat> so if you look at these two members, uh, one with the hatch lines to differentiate that from the other one I have put. See, now look at it is hinged at the or it pin connected at point C. So what would happen uh, to this? Is this going to stay uh, the same uh, configuration if I apply some force on these member? No, sir, I'm they'll rotate. Okay. They'll rotate in comparison to each other. Yeah, if I fix A, C, E, then uh, B, C, D will rotate about point C. If I fix B, C, D, then uh, A, C, E will rotate about point C. So they will have some relative motion, right? So I need to arrest them. So how can I arrest? By connecting with the third member. So I will have this member D, which is connecting these two. And that is a state member. So now you see this member <laughs> D, uh, is a third member. So now what would happen if I apply a load on this? Will they have a relative motion? Will they have a relative motion? We just now said they will have a relative motion in absence of D, E. If I connect this E, D member, now will they have a relative motion? What would be the uh, shape of this now? Will this uh, trapezium shape will be retained or will it uh, will be collapsed? on application of load. So if I say an application of load, you may consider I would apply a load here. Say some value 480 Newton, I apply. So will this shape remain same or it will change? Can you answer? Yeah. So the shape of this will not change now because that forms uh, the connection by three members. So the orientation of individual member with respect to other will not change. So this is now a rigid frame. Rigid frame. Why? Because there is no support now. It is just to have uh, uh, been constructed so that the configuration of the frame is described, the geometry of the frame is described, 
now i will give the dimensions as well and uh, the shape of this is retained now because of addition of de so this is a rigid frame so if i appropriately support them i can make this frame as statically determinate or indeterminate frame so if i wish to make this a statically determinate frame i should uh, simply support this frame so i would have a support here at a a hinge and i would have at point b a roller and this roller is constrained to roll in a vertical direction vertical wall constrained by to roll in this in a vertical direction so now you see this is a roller this is a hinge so uh, hinge will arrest the point a in two directional translation and whereas in the roller this point b is prevented to go in a horizontal direction so you have three unknowns if i remove the support so the three unknowns are solvable by three conditions of equilibrium which were essentially sigma m is equal to 0 sigma fx equal to 0 and sigma fy equals 0 so i would be able to find the support reaction so this frame is a first class frame rigid frame statically statically determinate frame so now what would be the question that you have to now look at this frame and find out uh, the reactions as well as find out uh, the reactions all the connection points c d e right so that's what analyze complete frame that's what is the question so now how do you go about solving first step is to find out the support reaction first step is to un understand what class of frame is this this is class 1 as per the classification that we have looked at so in such cases i can determine the support reaction uh, easily right by applying this condition of equilibrium so now if i apply this condition of equilibrium what are the reaction that i am going to have here i will have here ay and ax and i will have here bx so these are three unknowns so these three unknowns can be determined if i know complete geometry of this frame so for that consider the dimension of this frame now so individual member dimensions i will just provide you so uh, maybe i have not drawn this diagram to the scale so if you look at the link ace ACE link uh, uh, total height is of uh, 160 210 to 300 300 mm so that has been uh, splitted like this from point a to this point b is 120 mm and from point b to c 60 mm and from point c to this point e the vertical distance is 80 mm so 80 plus 60 140 plus uh, uh, this is 160 is not 120 sorry 160 mm please correct that 160 plus 60 210 220 plus 80 300 so the total height is 300 and from point b to c vertical height is 60 <coughs> now the dimension of member b c d is given like this so from b to c it is 60 mm and from c to the point of application of the load that is from point c to e is 100 mm and from this point till point e is of 150 mm 150 mm so it's 250 310 mm total and now uh, this is a structure frame that can be easily understood because there is a load acting at the link b c d in lateral direction so obviously this member b c d is a multi force member so if we have multi force member that structure is called a frame right <clears throat> when the degree of freedom 
of this structure is zero, then it is a frame structure. If the degree of freedom is one, then it is called a simple machine. So uh, machine and structure can be differentiated. So for a machine, degree of freedom is not zero. It can have minimum one degree of freedom and the degree of freedom can be increased. Whereas for a structure, degree of freedom is zero. So there is, there is no relative movement of a member forming the structure <coughs> Um, which is appropriately supported. <clears throat> so that is what is the frame. So now you are given this uh, uh, frame and you are able to identify the class and analyze this frame. So how do you go about solving this problem? First to find out the support reaction and then dismember and then solve the problem for remaining point, the reaction at point C, reaction at point D and E. So by observation, you can make out here this point E, there is a pin joint. You can consider the reaction direction along the orientation of this ED because there is no load acting on this member in lateral direction. So the members are necessary for a structure configuration. So this is an axial force member. So the resultant of reaction components at E, that is EX and EY and DX and DY, should be of same magnitude collinear and opposite sense acting. Either that would be uh, inducing compressive uh, um, nature reaction or tensile nature reaction. That while solving, we will be able to find out. Whereas at point E, this pin, EX and EY components you have to find out and then only you can decide what is the reaction at point E direction you can find out, right? So let's proceed to solve now uh, this frame. Uh, completely. So let me first apply <laughs> moment equation and find out what is Bx. So I will take sigma m a equals zero with the convention of positive direction moments in counterclockwise direction. <clears throat> so when I take that moment, I have this external load 480 newton and the moment arm is 100 mm now. So I would have this 480 Newton creates the moment at A is clockwise moment. So minus 480 into 100. And Bx into this distance that also create that creates counterclockwise moment. So plus Bx into 160 mm. And no other force uh, uh, reaction components in the entire frame structure because this is FBD of entire frame, that's equal to zero. So I get BX readily. So 48000 0, 0, 0 by 160. So that's going to be three, so 300 Newton. So BX is 300 Newton. And the direction is to the right. So now having found Bx, now I can apply uh, second equation and I can get what is my uh, Ax. So Bx plus Ax is what is equal to 0. Bx is 300, so Ax is minus 300. So what do you mean by minus 300? The direction assumed here is to the right should be reversed. So that's 300. Newton to the left. That's my AX. Right? <clears throat> now, what is AY? AY again, you can see in this entire frame only there are two forces. One is 480 external load acting down, another one is AY. So it's very straightforward by observation. Uh, this equation also can support it. Sigma FY equal to zero considering vertical forces upward direction positive, I have Ay minus 480 equals 0. So I have Ay equals 480 Newton. That's upward direction. So reaction at point A means I should combine this and I can find out. If it is not asked, you can just leave it as a component itself. If it is simply asked to find the reaction, then you have to find Ra, which is under root of Ax square plus a y square and that's going to be under root of 300 square plus 
480 square and you get the value 300 square plus 480 square 566 566.04 newton and what is the direction this is upward this is to the left so i would have its direction in this way this is my theta a so what is the direction value now so theta a is tan inverse of is tan inverse of a y by a x and that's going to be tan inverse of 480 by 300 and that's going to be 480 by 300 shift tan inverse answer is 57.99 or it is 58 degrees 58 degrees right so this is the reaction at point a so reaction at point b is horizontal uh, uh, only because of the roller support so you have got the reaction values right so now i can find out the individual point uh, reactions at point C and D E. So what I have to do for that, I have to dismember and solve the problem. So when I dismember, I would have like this. So let me draw a line diagram of my both member. So one is A, C, E. So this is point A. This is point C. This is point E. Another number is this is B. This point is C. This and this point is meeting, and uh, this point is D. And then this E D is connected by this number. This is E and D. So what is this orientation, this direction? Theta E would be <coughs> tan inverse of. From this configuration, you can find out. So what is this configuration? So this distance is 80. So this is 80. And uh, this distance is 150. So I require this angle. I require this angle, theta E. So this is 150 and this distance is, this is 150 and this is 80. So I can get, it is uh, tan inverse of 80 by 150. Tan inverse of 80 by 150. So what is the value I get? 80 by 150. Shift to tan inverse and set. That is 28.07 degrees. 28.07 degrees. So this orientation is. Uh, uh, why do I have to find this orientation? Because I can now put these reactions here. So let me assume that uh, the reaction here is pulling this member. That means the force exerted onto that is compressing this. I am going to assume that it has been pulled like this. So if this is pulled and this I call it as R E D or R D E. e. So that's same. Magnitude wise they are same. And uh, uh, direction in opposite direction and uh, on the same line of action, collinear. Then only this member can be under equilibrium. That's what is two force member equilibrium concept that we have already seen. <laughs> So now if I have my uh, RED written here with the same orientation, I will have it here. So instead of making DX, DY, two components, two unknowns, I have now only one that is RED here. And I know its orientation that is with the 28.07 degrees. So RED is one unknown that I can find. Now. At point B, I have BX and BY. I can take BX and BY, or I can also put uh, uh, 
sorry, at, uh, at point B, I have only one, right? That is uh, Bx. What is the value that we had? We have got uh, uh, Bx value is 300 Newton. That was 300 Newton to this. And uh, Cx and Cy are the unknown. So I will write that here. This number is Cx and this number as Cy. So what would happen here? Uh, let us now come to this. So at one point A, I had my resultant. I can take this or I can also represent here by the components. Let me now represent by components only for my convenience. So I have here now AX in this direction, which is 300, and AY in this direction, which is 480. That's the reaction value that we found that's there here. At C, I would have uh, CX and CY. So CY, I would take it downward. That's my CY. And CX, I would take it in this direction. So looking at this, I can take it in this direction. That's my CX. If we take that CX in this direction, I should carefully do it here. So I just correct so it. So CX here. should be in the left side, sir. Yeah, then I will change it here. That's all. So you can take it, but unless and until you find the magnitude, you would not be able to conclude it. What is the correct direction? So since I take here CY down because the AY is up here, since in this diagram I take it down, I should take it in the opposite direction in this. So I will have here now my CY in this direction. Sorry, CX in this direction. So when I take this point C meeting, CX, CX goes off, CY, CY goes off, I get my configuration back. And at what I will get at E? I will get at E, this, which is R, D, E. And its orientation is uh, with the theta E. So whenever you are solving a frame problem, you should look for, uh, are there any two force members in the frame? If you have two force members, that is going to give you an advantage of uh, um, having the direction known and it's only magnitude is unknown, like in this case that we witness. So now these are the free body diagrams of individual members. So now I can find out uh, all the necessary uh, uh, reactions at different points. So what are those to be required? Reaction at C and reaction at D. So reaction at D, whatever that I get, is a reaction at E as well, right? But they are of opposite direction. That's what we understand. So I can solve that uh, either by taking the free body diagram of BCD or by taking the free body diagram of ACD, ACE. Any one of this can be taken and we can find out. If I get in this, this is positive. The direction assumed all are correct. So uh, I, uh, I, I just uh, request that you are solving yourself uh, parallelly. So some of you can solve by taking ACE free body diagram and the other group can take a BCE, BCD uh, diagram. You should get the same result. So let me take FBD of, of ACE, number ACE. So in that now to find out CX and CY, uh, what I can do before that, let me find out RDE by taking moment at point C. So when I take moment at point C, I would have RDE readily of time. So applying moment equilibrium equation at point C equating to zero with the convention counterclockwise moments, some positive, I would have now RDE. I would have this of two components, right? For a convenient, let me have that with the two components. This is one and this is the other one. So one is RDE cos theta E. Other one is RDE sin theta E. So both the component will participate in the moment equation. And at point A, I have AX only will participate in moment equation. AY will not as that is having its line of action passes through point C. So how many components that I will have? Three components of my moment sum will be there in this equation. So now 
first one is rde cos theta e that is 28.07 that would create a moment in counter clockwise direction at point c so this distance is 80 mm you can see that distance is 80 mm so this distance is 80 mm now so let me take that here uh, into 80 mm and rde is common so i can take that out so again rde with respect to point e is counter clockwise moment so i take uh, that as plus sign and that would be sin 28.07 degrees multiplied by this distance so from c to d horizontal distance is what horizontal distance from from point c to e that is this 100 mm that is this 100 mm so take that here into 100 that's moment by this now moment by ax so that would again create about point c counter clockwise moment so plus 300 into this distance ac vertical distance from point a to c is what is uh, 160 plus 60 that's 220 mm into 220 so this is all equal to 0 is what is moment balance so that solves for rde rde so that's going to be now <coughs> take this on the other side so minus 300 into 220 Divided by 80 cos 28.07 plus 100 sine 28.07 degrees. So solve this. So I have now negative answer. So that's an interesting point. So when I solve this, 80 into cos 28.07. Plus 100 into sine 28.07. That's equal to 117.6. So reciprocal value of this multiplied by 300 into 220. That's going to be 561. So minus 561 newton. so what do you mean by this minus sign so the minus sign are represent that the direction has been to be reversed so whatever that i have here i will not change the direction i will write here this my answer is minus 561 so here it is again minus 561 so here the reaction is 561 is pulling means the reaction actually is pushing this member that means the force exerted on to the member is the pull so the member is under compression by the pin reaction that's how you should uh, understand so what is the force that is exerted on to the member ed is asked you should say that is of magnitude 561 newton uh, uh, pulling the member de because this free body diagram whatever that you have drawn is the reaction at this pin so the reaction here is to pull the member means the force exerted on to this is the uh, compression so that is how you would understand so now uh, rde direction in the free body diagram should be 561 newton uh, in the reverse direction like this at point e in ace member that's important in ace member the direction changed accordingly here also it is to change it. here also it has to change i don't the change the direction drawn in the diagram rather i put minus 61 as it is right so now let's find out what does uh, order what is the reaction point c so for that uh, what i should do i can apply uh, now in the same free body diagram sigma fx equal to 0 to get cx so sigma yeah need out Yeah. See, someone is having a doubt. Please ask. Otherwise, mute yourself. Uh, I get some noise. Or I can mute 
all. You have a doubt, please ask. Otherwise, uh, it's a kind of disturbance, right? I, I thought you have a doubt to ask me. If you do not have a doubt at this moment, let me continue. So here, sigma fx, sigma fx equal to zero when I put on which free body diagram? On free body diagram of A, C, E. So I have here Cx unknown that I can find now. Ax to the left 300 this component to the right as per this direction but i have here minus value so now let me just put that see so that is cx minus 300 that's my uh, minus 300 that's my ax right that's my ax value and uh, now whatever you have found rde cost uh, theta e. So RDE I got minus. So plus because uh, this diagram it is to the right, but the value is magnitude is minus sign I have got. So minus 561 cos of angle 28.07 degrees. <clears throat> right? And any other force, these are only that's equal to zero. So I get Cx now. So Cx would be 561 cos 28.07. This goes on that side become plus uh, plus 300. So I would get now into cos 28.07 is 5 495 plus 300. I get 795 795 Newton. Uh, uh, Cx as in direction to the right is positive, correct. So this is my Cx. Now to find Cy, I'll have to apply vertical equilibrium. So sigma Fy equal to zero when I apply. I get in this diagram Ay upward positive, Cy downward negative, and I have here Rde sine theta direction upward, but I have its magnitude minus of time. So let me just do that now by considering the third condition of equilibrium sigma f y equals zero this positive so i have my a y 480 upward positive c y in the diagram i consider downward direction so c y minus c y and uh, i have um, rde plus upward considered so plus rde minus 561 sine 28.07 degrees so this is all equal to zero. So this also for Cy, I take it on the other side. So it's 480 minus 561 sine 28.07 degrees. So I get 480 minus 561 into sine 28.07. That's equal to 216. 216 Newton. And the Cy assumed direction is correct. So it's downward direction Cy. Therefore, now the reaction at point C, RC, will be under root of Cx square plus Cy square is equal to Cx is 795 square plus Cy is 216 square. So I would have 795 square plus 216 square within radical answer. It is 823.82. 823.82 Newton. And you look at now Cx to the right, Cy down. So the direction would be the C theta, theta C. Right, that point C, what is this uh, reaction direction is given by this. So theta C will be tan inverse of Cy is 216 by 795. That's going to be 216 divided by 795. Shift tan inverse answer. I get 15.2 degrees. 2 degrees. So this is 15.2 degrees. What is reaction at point C? So reaction at point C is this, and you have now completed your analysis. Reaction at point E you have found 
on the same reaction at point B here in this number, but in opposite direction. So this is how you can uh, complete your problem. So is there any doubt that you have? Yes, sir. I have two doubts, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, sir, if my first thought is, is, sir, while finding C y, yeah, uh, uh, we got, uh, we took, we assumed F y to be positive in the upward direction. Yeah. Uh, so when we got 216, why have we taken it downwards? No, no, no. Uh, 216. Uh, see, your question is why 216 comes down. No, see, I just have uh, drawn, assumed like that. See, now here, this free body diagram, see why I have taken it down. So when I solve this, I get the positive value of uh, that. My direction as it is correct. This is CY is downward direction. Oh, okay. See, okay. here what I do, before I start applying the condition of equilibrium equation, I just draw the free body diagram. So AX and AY are found out from the entire frame free body diagram. So I know the magnitude direction here. So AX initially I consider here, you can see in this frame to the right. Right here, I have found considered to the right, but while solving, I thought it is to the left. So, this AX here is, this, is minus 300. So, when I have drawn this free body diagram of ACE, I have taken the correct direction, what I have determined. Okay, right? sir. And uh, now I have AX, AY. So the two other one I just have as uh, CX should be to the right and CY to be downward because AY already is upward. And this direction assumed also will have an upward direction component. So I thought oh, this I thought is the And uh, the assumption is correct. When I solve uh, for CY, I get a positive value. So here I get a positive value. So it is downward direction. Right, so this value is what two one six positive. So if I get a positive value, the direction of speed is correct. If I get here a negative value, I should change the direction. That's the meaning. That's exactly what we did while finding out um, the reaction at, uh, at RDE. See, when I solve for RDE, see, I get minus five six one. So because of that, I should change the direction. So the direction uh, changes <coughs> what? <coughs> In uh, if, uh, if BD of uh, uh, ACE, I have this direction. The uh, reaction is in first quadrant. Having tail origin, it's uh, going in first quadrant, whereas the actual direction should be reversed. It is in third quadrant. So if it is here with the minus sign, the same would be affected in the other uh, FBDs as well. I do not want to uh, uh, do it in this. So instead, I just write with the minus sign. And I continue my analysis till I complete for all the point reactions. That's all. That's the procedure. And uh, that is positive only with this one free body diagram. So I can also cross check the same procedure considering uh, BCD free body diagram also. If we solve using BCD free body diagram, again you see uh, if I take moment at point C, this creates what clockwise moment. So these two components, uh, one goes along this will not participate. The other one also creates clockwise moment. So there is a negative sign. So you would change, you'd get the same magnitude, but it is opposite direction. You would also solve using this. You can verify that. Okay, right? sir. Yes, sir. So any other doubt? If you do not have a doubt, I will stop with this problem for this period. And again, I will uh, continue with the next period with the new recording, right? So I'll just uh, uh, stop recording.